Apollo 16 was the 10th crewed mission in the United States Apollo space program, administered by NASA, and the fifth and penultimate to land on the moon. It was the second of Apollo's J missions, with an extended stay on the lunar surface, a focus on science, and the use of the lunar roving vehicle. Launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida on April 16, 1972, Apollo 16 experienced a number of minor glitches en route to the moon. These culminated with a problem with the spaceship's main engine that resulted in a six-hour delay in the moon landing as NASA managers contemplated having the astronauts abort the mission and return to Earth, before deciding the problem could be overcome. Although they permitted the lunar landing, NASA had the astronauts return from the mission one day earlier than planned. After flying the lunar module to the moon's surface on April 21, Young and Duke spent 71 hours just under three days on the lunar surface, during which they conducted three extravehicular activities or moonwalks, totaling 20 hours and 14 minutes. The pair drove the lunar rover, the second used on the moon, for 26.7 kilometers. On the surface, Young and Duke collected 95.8 kilograms of lunar samples for return to Earth, including Big Muley, the largest moon rock collected during the Apollo missions. During this time Mattingly orbited the moon in the command and service module, taking photos and operating scientific instruments. Mattingly, in the command module, spent 126 hours and 64 revolutions in lunar orbit. After Young and Duke rejoined Mattingly in lunar orbit, the crew released a subsatellite from the service module. During the return trip to Earth, Mattingly performed a one-hour spacewalk to retrieve several film cassettes from the exterior of the service module. Apollo 16 returned safely to Earth on April 27, 1972. John Young, the mission commander, was 41 years old and a captain in the Navy at the time of Apollo 16. Becoming an astronaut in 1962 as part of the second group to be selected by NASA, he flew in Gemini 3 with Gus Grissom in 1965, becoming the first American not of the Mercury 7 to fly in space. He thereafter flew in Gemini 10 with Michael Collins and as command module pilot of Apollo 10. With Apollo 16, he became the second American, after Jim Lovell, to fly in space four times. Thomas Kenneth, Ken, Mattingly, the command module pilot, was 36 years old and a lieutenant commander in the Navy at the time of Apollo 16. Mattingly had been selected in NASA's fifth group of astronauts in 1966. He was a member of the support crew for Apollo 8 and Apollo 9. Mattingly then undertook parallel training with Apollo 11's backup CMP, William Anders, who had announced his resignation from NASA effective at the end of July 1969 and would thus be unavailable if the first lunar landing mission was postponed. Had Anders left NASA before Apollo 11 flew, Mattingly would have taken his place on the backup crew. Mattingly had originally been assigned to the prime crew of Apollo 13, but was exposed to rubella through Charles Duke, at that time with Young on Apollo 13's backup crew. Duke had caught it from one of his children. Mattingly never contracted the illness, that three days before launch was removed from the crew and replaced by his backup, Jack Swigert. Duke, also a Group 5 astronaut and a space rookie, had served on the support crew of Apollo 10 and was a capsule communicator for Apollo 11. A lieutenant colonel in the Air Force, Duke was 36 years old at the time of Apollo 16, which made him the youngest of the 12 astronauts who walked on the moon during Apollo as of the time of the mission. All three men were announced as the prime crew of Apollo 16 on March 3, 1971. After the cancellations of Apollos 18 and 19 were announced in September 1970, it made more sense to use astronauts who had already flown lunar missions as backups, rather than training others on what would likely be a dead-end assignment. Subsequently, Rusa and Mitchell were assigned to the backup crew, while Pogue and Carr were reassigned to the Skylab program where they flew on Skylab 4. For projects Mercury and Gemini, a prime and a backup crew had been designated, but for Apollo, a third group of astronauts, known as the support crew, was also designated. Slayton created the support crews early in the Apollo program on the advice of Apollo crew commander James McDivitt, who would lead Apollo 9. McDivitt believed that, with preparation going on in facilities across the US, meetings that needed a member of the flight crew would be missed. Support crew members were to assist as directed by the mission commander. Usually low in seniority, they assembled the mission's rules, flight plan, and checklists, and flight directors during Apollo had a one-sentence job description. The flight director may take any actions necessary for crew safety and mission success. CAPCOMs were Hayes, Rusa, Mitchell, James B. Irwin, England, Peterson, Hartsfield, and C. Gordon Fullerton. The insignia was designed from ideas originally submitted by the crew of the mission, 
by Barbara Matelski of the Graphics Shop at the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston. Young and Duke chose Orion for the Lunar Module's call sign, while Mattingly chose Casper for the Command and Service Module. According to Duke, he and Young chose Orion for the LM because they wanted something connected with the stars. It is a prominent constellation and easy to pronounce and transmit to mission control. Mattingly said he chose Casper, evoking Casper the friendly ghost, because there are enough serious things in this flight, so I picked a non-serious name. Apollo 16 was the second of Apollo's J missions, featuring the use of the lunar roving vehicle, increased scientific capability, and three-day lunar surface stays. As Apollo 16 was the penultimate mission in the Apollo program and there was no major new hardware or procedures to test on the lunar surface, the last two missions presented opportunities for astronauts to clear up some of the uncertainties in understanding the Moon's characteristics. Scientists sought information on the Moon's early history, which might be obtained from its ancient surface features, the lunar highlands. Previous Apollo expeditions, including Apollo 14 and Apollo 15, had obtained samples of premier lunar material, likely thrown from the highlands by meteorite impacts. No Apollo mission had actually visited the lunar highlands, kept them updated. Apollo 14 had visited and sampled a ridge of material ejected by the impact that created the Mare Imbrium impact basin. Apollo 15 had also sampled material in the region of Imbrium, visiting the basin's edge. Because the Apollo 14 and Apollo 15 landing sites were closely associated with the Imbrium basin, there was still the chance that different geologic processes were prevalent in areas of the lunar highlands far from Mare Imbrium. Scientist Dan Milton, studying photographs of the highlands from lunar orbiter photographs, saw an area in the Descartes region of the Moon with unusually high albedo that he theorized might be due to volcanic rock, his theory quickly gained wide support. Several members of the scientific community noted that the central lunar highlands resembled regions on Earth that were created by volcanism processes and hypothesized the same might be true on the Moon. They hoped scientific output from the Apollo 16 mission would provide an answer. Some scientists advocated for a landing near the large crater, Tycho, but its distance from the lunar equator and the fact that the lunar module would have to approach over very rough terrain ruled it out. The Ad Hoc Apollo Site Evaluation Committee met in April and May 1971 to decide the Apollo 16 and 17 landing sites, it was chaired by Noel Hinners of Belcom. There was consensus the final landing sites should be in the lunar highlands, and among the sites considered for Apollo 16 were the Descartes Highlands region west of Mare Nectaris and the crater Alphonsus. The considerable distance between the Descartes site and previous Apollo landing sites would also be beneficial for the network of seismometers, deployed on each landing mission beginning with Apollo 12. 